combo class for you today. For equipment, we are going to use a single weight, go heavy-ish, I'm using a 15 pound weight, and we're also going to mix in some sliding work. So if you're on hardwood floors, a dish towel works great. If you're on carpet, paper plates work, or you can buy those plastic disc gliders, and you will just need one of those. Now, typically in Build-A-Combo classes, uh, we build up to three-part combinations. Today, a little different, we're gonna build up to four-part combinations. Because it is a longer build, we only complete two sets of each of the three combos, once on the right, rest, once on the left, and then we move on. So as we build up this combo, you start with just movement A, then it's movement A plus movement B, then movement A plus movement B plus movement C, then movement A, B, C, D, and then you finish with just movement D. There will be minimal jumping mixed in throughout class, but there is some. Very easy to keep it low impact though and modify those movements. We're gonna start class with a quick guided warm up, focused on mobility and some dynamic movement to build a little heat in the body. And we'll finish up class with a quick guided cool down. You don't need your equipment for a warm up, and we can start standing. Wow, he is passed out. <laughs> so we can start standing, and I want you to reach your arms forward, palms facing towards each other at chest height. Now, as you exhale, you're gonna nod the chin and you're gonna round forward, opening up through the mid back. As you inhale, you're gonna stack the spine back up to neutral, and then you're gonna give me a reverse fly, opening the arms up, retracting the shoulder blades, bring them forward. As you nod the chin and round forward, there's that protraction of the shoulder blades. They separate that wideness across the mid back. You stack the spine up to neutral, reverse fly. Let's do that twice more. Exhale. Inhale to stack. We fly those arms without flaring the ribs. Last time, reach it forward. Stack to neutral, reverse fly, and then from here I want you to bring your arms overhead, hip hinge, sweep those arms. So the, arm, the hips are sliding back, and then you're coming up right, staying open through the chest. We're gonna hold in the hip hinge, four, three, two, keep the arm sweep going, but stay in the hip hinge, establishing that connection to our mid back. Now, if your feet are currently separate, I want you to bring them in towards each other, Three, pause in two, one. Now pause here, I want you to take your right hand to the outside of the left knee, reach your left arm forward on an inhale, we twist open, exhale, bring it back through center. Keep reaching your tailbone back. Twist it open and close, twice more this side. Come through center and let's switch, left hand to the outside of the right knee, right arm reaches forward, inhale, open, twist, and back through center. Twice more. Last time. And then from here, stay in your hinge. Separate the feet about as wide as your mat. And we're going to drop into a low squat. And then hands to the mat, forward fold. Dropping to a low squat, lift the chest. Hands to the mat, lift. You don't have to get super low in the squat. The wider stance will help though. One more time, forward fold. And then from here, you're gonna roll it up to stand. We're gonna come into some dynamic movement. I'm gonna give you three moves. We'll go through them twice. First is going to be a squat to a hip circle, crossing midline, step it wide. And you're just going side to side, mobilizing through that hip joint. We're gonna do wide stance, side lunge, reach and twist in three, circle for two, one, find a wide stance, you side lunge to one side, opposite hand towards that foot, and then slide it across. We stay open through the chest, so no big deal if your hand doesn't actually touch the floor. Third move, we have a squat to a butt kick, adding in a reach and pull the arms in three, Two, one, at the bottom of your squat, arms reach forward. As you come up, heel the bum, roll the elbows back without arching into your lower back excessively and flaring open through the rib cage. So as you come up, you exhale. So we just kind of remove the arms and take this right into our squat to hip circle in three, two, one, squat to hip circle.
wide stance, side lunge, reach and twist in three, two, one. Find that nice wide stance, feet point forward, and we just slide laterally. Squat, butt kick, reach and pull in four, three, two, one. Let's go. So you just have one more thing left in your warm up after this. We are gonna grab the weight and we're gonna do a good morning hinge to a squat. In four, three, two, one. So you're gonna grab your weight, we're gonna hold it at our chest. And from here it's gonna be a hip hinge and then a squat. So your feet are hips distance apart or maybe even a smidge wider. We hinge it, we bend the knees coming to our squat, we press our feet into the floor as we come to stand. Stay open through the chest, not letting the shoulders round forward. I'm going to give you a preview of our first combo. In two. Last one. Come to stand, and here's a preview of the first combo. First up, you're in a side lunge position, and you're going to do a single arm row as you knee slide in and out. From there, we add in a balance. You come to a knee drive position, racking that weight on your shoulder. Third add-on from that knee drive position, you're going to step into a back lunge, reaching the weight towards the floor, and then you reverse it. Knee drive, step to the side lunge. Final add-on, when you step to that back lunge, you put the weight all the way on the floor, and you're going to do a push-off lunge, driving that front knee up in towards your hands. But if you want to modify, keep both feet on the floor and just give me a lunge pulse instead on that one. All right, three and a half minute flow. Let's do it. So we're gonna start with the right leg as the focus. So ball of the left foot is going to be on the glider and left hand will have the weight. Just a note, I'm going to start facing you, but when we get to the third add-on, I'm just gonna to turn to the side so that I have more space, okay? But I'm doing the same thing. I just think to start out, it'll give you a better view. So I want you to grab that weight in your left hand. Again, left heel is lifted up. We're gonna find that side lunge position. Picture the right side of your body is up against a wall. So hip, knee, outer ankle, all in line. Slide those hips back, big hinge forward with the torso, brace through the core. It's gonna be that row and slide the first 30 seconds. So we have a three and a half minutes of work, okay? It's a long time, but we just do it once each side. Except I had technical issues, so this is the second time I'm doing it on this side, <laughs> FML. Up next, we will add in that rack of the weight to our shoulder as we stand a knee drive. Important, keep the towel out there when you rack the weight, don't fling it around. That way it's there for you when we return. <laughs> Add it in so when the leg is long, exhale, <laughs> rack that weight. Return it to your side lunge, row. <laughs> so I recommend coming up on the exhale so you can brace to the core and really focus on squeezing into the right side glutes. <laughs> in this two part combo for 45 seconds. <laughs> So we're approaching that third add-on. So I'm just gonna to turn to face the side. It'll be that step to a back lunge from our knee drive position. Ooh, a little wobbly. Add it in. So row and slide, stand to knee drive, and now step your left foot back as you reach the weight towards the floor getting low. And then just reverse it. Stand to your knee drive, step out to your side lunge. Here for a minute. So the fourth add-on is coming up. When we step to that back lunge, we will lower the weight all the way to the floor so that we can release it and do that push-off lunge, which is just a bodyweight exercise. <sighs> Add it in. So step back, weight comes to the floor. Push off, driving your right knee into your hands. To modify, just do a lunge pulse, keeping both feet on the floor. Grab the weight. <sighs> you know the deal. We reverse it back to start here for a minute.
So we're approaching those final 15. It'll just be that lunge push off. Whoop. I can't talk when I do the balance thing. It's so hard. All right, just that lunge push off or lunge pulse to modify. Push away. And rest. Woo! You have a full minute to recover. All right, so I know three and a half minutes is a long interval to be working, but we only do it once each side. So, got another 45 seconds to catch your breath here. And we'll do that whole thing. Left leg will be the focus, right foot will be on the glider. And a note, if you're having a lot of trouble with the balance exercise, instead of coming to a knee drive position, you can just plant the ball of the foot on the floor, like a little kickstand to help you with balance, okay? Woo, okay, grab that weight. Weight is going to be in your right hand. Ball of the right foot is gonna be on the glider. Left is the focus, so you're gonna start mirroring me. I, I will turn to the side when we get to that third add-on though. We send our hips back, long neutral spine. Remember, left side of your body up against a wall. First 30 seconds is that single arm row while well, you slide the knee in and out. Not transferring much weight onto this foot. So I'm keeping the heel lifted. Stabilize through this knee. So don't let it wobble around. We'll add in that rack with that knee drive. Add it in. So when the leg is extended, leave the towel out there. Third add-on is coming up. It'll be that step to a back lunge. I'm just gonna turn to face the side. Add it in. From your knee drive position, you step down, weight reaches towards the floor, reverse it. Here for a minute. So final add-on is coming up. We will come all the way to the floor. And we'll do that push off lunge or that lunge pulse to modify. Add it in, slide in row, rack and knee drive. Step to your back lunge, Weight's co weight comes down, push off your left foot, the front left foot, driving the knee in. So we're approaching that final 15. It'll just be that push off lunge. Woo. All right, just that push up lunge, weight is down. Think of really pressing the floor away, driving the knee up. Be mindful of that weight, okay? I don't want your foot to come down on it. 
and done. Oh. All right, you have a little over a minute here. I'm gonna show you combo number two. Now, just a note about the second combo, it requires us to get pretty low in our lunge to put the weight on the floor. If this is a little too low mobility-wise, you might wanna do the second one with a kettlebell instead because the handle's a little higher and you won't have to get quite as low. So first part of this is just going to be a sliding back lunge. From there, we add in a split kick at the bottom. So the weight comes all the way to the mat and you just kick that back leg up, almost like you're coming into a deadlift. Does not have to be a big, huge movement. Third add-on, you're gonna to step to a low squat and from there, you are going to snatch the weight overhead. If you're uncomfortable doing a snatch though, I want you to do a high pull. So you pick which exercise you're more comfortable with. Fourth add-on is after you do that snatch or high pull and put the weight on the ground, you're gonna give me a squat jump. If you wanna keep class low impact instead of the squat jump, it's just going to be an air squat. Easy peasy, right? We wait, our hand returns to the weight, we step back into our lunge and we start from the top. Final 15 is just that squat jump or air squat. All right, you know the drill, three and a half minutes, once on each side, let's go. So just like in the first combo, the, we're gonna start with the weight in our left hand, follow the left foot on the glider, right foot will be forward and right uh, leg will be our target leg this first time through. So you wanna square the hips. Now a recommendation, notice I'm holding the weight with the ends pointing side to side. Do that instead of the ends pointing forward and back because it'll make the transition through the uh, combos easier. So we'll start with this back lunge. You don't have to get super low these first 30 seconds, okay? By no means does the weight have to come to the ground, but we will get there when we add in our second move. So I'm doing this with a straight back leg. I'm hinging forward, shoulders over front knee, and I press that right foot into the floor to come up, fire through the glutes. Okay, so when we add on that second movement, we'll take this lunge really low putting the weight on the floor and just doing a little kick through that back leg. All right, so you come all the way down, keep the hand on the weight though, and then just a little kick, picture you could kind of straighten both legs, land back in that low lunge, and then coming back up out of that lunge is gonna be tough, okay? You gotta really power through that right leg. A little standing split kick, and then open through the chest, brace through your core, Woo! come up with that weight. Now, if coming up out of this low position with the weight is too much, then you can leave it on the floor and you can turn your sliding lunge into a body weight sliding lunge. All right, and then you'll just find the weight at the bottom. That is absolutely an option. Next add-on coming up, we will step to a low squat and we will uh, snatch. So this back left foot is gonna step forward, open through the chest, snatch or high pull, return it to the floor, step your foot back, and then we start from the top. Final add-on will be that squat jump or an air squat. Add it in. So after you do that high pull or that snatch, weight comes to the floor, squat jump, hand to the weight, step the leg back, start from the top. Hardest part is getting back up out of that low lunge, in my opinion. And again, you can always leave the weight on the floor for it. Final 15 is just going to be that squat jump. Just that squat jump, let's go. To modify, air squat, keeping the feet on the ground. Oh, done. 
one. Oh, that's a tough one. All right, you have a full minute to recover. I'm gonna do that whole thing on the other side. I'm gonna move my mat, you don't have to though. You don't really even need a mat for these first two. Okay, left foot will be forward, right foot on the glider, right hand has the weight. Oh, let's do it. So you don't have to get super, super low with these first 30 seconds in the sliding back lunge. Again, left foot forward, right ball of the right foot on the glider. Keep the back heel lifted. Weight is in your right hand. Let's go. Sliding back lunge. Hips slide back, torso hinges forward. And again, you want the ends of the dumbbell pointing side to side, not forward and back, especially as we start adding into the combo. So we're coming up all the way out of this lunge. You are contracting through the glutes, bracing through the core at the top. We'll add in that standing split kick. So come all the way, weight is on the ground. Kick that back leg up, it doesn't have to be big. Land back low and this is the tough part. Come all the way to the top. You have the option to leave the weight on the mat when you come up out of that lunge, because I know that is a very challenging part to it. Try to do whatever you did on the first side though, so that we keep everything equal. We add in that step to a squat for our snatch or our high pull. Up next. Add it in. So we slide all the way down. Give me that little kick. Step to your low squat, open through the chest, so lift it before you go into that overhead snatch of your high pull. And then you step back and you start from the top. Here for a minute. Final add-on is coming up. It's gonna be that squat jump. Add it in. After your high puller snatch, weight comes down. Squat jump. Step it back. Come on, in under 60 seconds. You're done with the second combo. Approaching those final 15, it'll just be the squat jump or air squat if you're choosing to keep low impact. Let's go. You don't need the weight. Be cautious of it though. I don't want you landing on it. So maybe scoop back away from it. Just 15, you can do it. Oh, done. Wow, that was a hard one. A little over a minute to recover. I'll show you our final combo. Our final combo is plank based, so we're only going to build up to a three part combo instead of four. I am not so mean that I would make you be in a plank for three and a half minutes, okay? So in the first move, you just have one foot on the glider, the other foot is hooked over that ankle, and you're gonna give me a single leg sliding plank to pike. From there, you just step the hand out to grab the weight as you step that other foot out, and you're gonna give me a renegade row. 
The third add-on, you're going to slide the leg through as you open up into a side plank. And then the final 15 seconds, we hold in that side plank. You can keep the foot down, or if you want a challenge, you can lift it up to a hover, okay? So it's a minute 45 seconds of plank work, which is still tough, but you only have to do it once each side, so we got this. All right, let's go. So to be clear about the setup, the weight is going to start on the outside of your left hand. I want both hands on the mat for the first exercise. Your right foot is going to be on the glider and the left foot is going to hook over that right heel and we'll start with just 15 seconds of a sliding plank to pike. So spread out through the hands, hands are under shoulders. Right leg reaches long, left will hook over it, legs stay straight as we pike the hips up and down. Let's go, exhale, hips pike up. Inhale to lower. So when we add on, we are going to step that left foot out to the side as we bring our left hand to the weight for a renegade row on that left side. Right hand stays planted. All right, so step the right side, or sorry, the left side out. One renegade row. Weight comes down. Step back in and hook. One pike. Step it out. Hips stay level as you do that row. Step it back. Up next, we'll add that sliding kick through as we come to a side plank. Again, right hand stays planted, right leg will kick through. Add it in. So after you do that row, you're going to bring left hand to the ceiling as the right leg kicks through. Reverse it back to start. Sliding pike. Renegade row. Open up into that side plank. So we'll finish in that side plank hold. When we do, option to lift the right leg to a hover. All right, let's go. So we find that side plank. Maybe you reach that bottom leg to a hover. Hold 15 seconds and you're done on this side. Push them out away, stable to the shoulders. And rest, lower the hips and let's take a counter stretch so that right arm can sweep up and over. Ooh, you have a full minute to recover. We're gonna do that whole thing on the other side and then you're done with this class. So class is tough. These are tough combos, but class is also pretty quick. One and done on each side. So I'm flipping my mat just so that I mirror you when I kick open into that side plank. You of course don't have to. So the setup, the dumbbell will be to the outside of your right hand. Left hand is the one that's gonna stay planted the whole time. Left foot is going to be on the glider. Okay, let's do it. Minute 45 and we cool down. So spread out through the fingers, hands under shoulders. Your left foot is on the glider, right is gonna hook on left. We start with 15 seconds of that pike. Up and down. When we add on, the right foot is gonna step out to the side as the right hand comes to the weight and we'll add in that renegade row. Add it in one sliding pike, step it out, renegade row. Next add on will be that kick through as we open up into our side plank. Add it in. So after you do that renegade row, left kicks through, we open up into our side plank. We reverse it back to start. Hooking foot on heel, one pike. One row, keeping the hips level. And we slide it open. We have that hold to finish coming up. 
Okay, come to that side plank. Final 15 seconds. Maybe you stay here with the foot down. Maybe you lift that uh, left leg to a hover. Open to the chest, you got it. Oh, done, lower the hips, let's take a counter stretch. Ooh, left arm sweeps up and over. Awesome work. Oh, let's cool it down. I'm gonna just move my weight and bring my knees to the mat so it's a little more comfortable for me. Let's come to tabletop. We'll take a thread the needle stretch. So I want you to start by weaving the right under left cheek to the mat and then walk your left arm forward and breathe into your mid back. Walking your left hand in. Let's come through center and do it to the other side. Walking the right hand in, let's come through tabletop. From here, I want you to step your feet back into just a quick plank and then hips up into your downward dog. You can pedal out the heels a little bit, but then I want you to settle into the stretch, pressing both heels towards the floor and pressing your chest towards your thighs. We're gonna come into a half pigeon. So we'll shift forward towards plank, bringing the right knee forward, shin kicks across lowering it down and you can come to rest your forehead on your forearms. It might feel good to prop your right hip up on the pillow. I know it can feel good to stay in a half pigeon for an extended period of time. So by all means, no rush to come out of it. But if you are ready to switch sides, we'll transition back through down dog. And then as we shift forward, it's the left knee that'll draw forward, shin kicks across. Scoot that right leg back and come to lower forehead to forearms. finish in a seated position. To get there, I'm going to roll to the outer side of my left hip and swing the right leg around, but you can transition back through down dog if that works better for you. Let's just finish with one deep breath. Inhaling arms up, exhaling release, and that is your class. Awesome work today. See you next time. <laughs>